Hey y'all, it's John with Empire Weather. Hope you guys are doing well and uh, having a great Tuesday so far. Here was the latest long range video update and uh, agriculture extended forecast as we move into closer to the mid June time frame and um, the period after, which has been forecast to be uh, quite active and a pattern change coming our way. So we're going to break down what's expected and what's going on. Here's a look at what has happened over the last couple days at first. Um, and this is from the weekend, the last three days of rainfall. So bit of rain in parts of eastern Nebraska and Kansas, obviously a little bit sporadic, some heavy rains others have missed, um, and those rains from the weekend front coming into parts of southern Iowa, Missouri, into southern Illinois and Indiana, and into Ohio, but notably this part of the Great Lakes has missed a lot of the heavier precip, northern Illinois, northern Indiana, Michigan, parts of Iowa, over the last three days they've missed a lot, and if you go back to the last seven days and look at the totals, that area has still missed a lot, and if you back it up to the last 14 days, that area has still missed a lot, so this is very clearly the focus area that has missed those uh, heavier showers and storms. Now, we do have that band of rain that came through the Ohio Valley, but otherwise, if we back up and look at our precip ranks by climate district, much of this area, specifically the Great Lakes, is way behind in precipitation. This is from May 1st through yesterday, and we're looking at the last 131 years of data. And a lot of Wisconsin, northern Illinois and Indiana, parts of northern Ohio, Michigan, they're they're within the top 10 driest of the last 131 years. Pennsylvania, uh, well within the top 10. And the same can be said all the way back here into parts of Iowa and eastern Nebraska, even parts of southeast South Dakota. It's become very clear where the problem area is, and this is obviously your focus of the most dry conditions, and is going to be the focus moving forward as we head into this active pattern, because these areas, the northern Ohio Valley, the northeast belt into the Great Lakes are going to need moisture and they're going to need it fairly quickly given how quickly the soil and subsoil are drying out in these areas. The one good thing is that we haven't had a ton of heat. The, the temperatures have been warm, but recently they've even cooled down a bit and that has taken a lot of stress off the crop itself and allowed us a little bit of a buffer zone here and some more time to get some precipitation in. Don't want to talk, I don't want to forget to talk about the uh, western plains and the southern plains. This area went three years without really much rainfall to speak of and now it's a top five wettest for parts of northwestern kansas new mexico colorado just continuing to bank in on the rain western kansas getting some rains now and obviously up into the high plains as well so the winners and losers here over the last 30 plus days very very obvious on this map so this will be our focus area moving forward it's that central and eastern belt we're going to need to start to get moisture into those areas. And the good news is we're going to have some opportunities. Now, one of them comes in the next couple of days. Here's the NAM model showing this upper low spinning over parts of the Great Lakes. Unfortunately for Michigan, that low is right overhead. So all the moisture is going to go around there. Uh, but that does include parts of Wisconsin into parts of northern uh, Indiana and Ohio into Pennsylvania over the next couple of days. The models show this band of moisture rotating in. This is our high-resolution model guidance. So up to and even... More than an inch in some areas, according to these models, as thunderstorm activity develops. So parts of Ohio, maybe northeastern Indiana, and then into Texas are going to see some beneficial rains that just popped up in the forecast here in the last couple of days. And going back to this map, that's a that's a chunk here of this area that really needs it. So good news in the short term. Uh, this precipitation develops tonight into Wednesday morning, and you see it rotate through in those locally heavy rains from this thunderstorm activity that develops later today and then uh, lingers into Wednesday morning. Now that gets out of the way Wednesday morning into Thursday, and things clear out a little bit. We'll watch some isolated storm potential Thursday into Friday across the Ohio Valley. Not looking like anything overly widespread during that time frame, but we'll keep a close eye on it. But our focus is going to turn back here. You see these storms building across the plains? This is the start of that pattern change that we've been talking about, and I want to show you guys what's happening here to lead to this change. So what we've, the pattern that we've been in has been one that has featured a lot of troughing across the eastern U.S. that's been really hard to shake, uh, and a subtropical jet coming out here from the Pacific. Uh, you'll notice the lack of a big trough across the west coast. Now, that has really kept a lot of the flow down here in the southern plains. And if we look at where we have been, that's where our flow has been, right? You see all this jet stream, all these bright colors here. All your flow is into the southern plains. So it's not surprising then that this area has been the one that has really cashed in on the moisture. It's been Texas, it's been New Mexico, it's been Colorado, it's been Kansas. So 
that's fine. For the next couple of days, that's where our flow is going to be. That's where it's going to stay through this weekend. But you'll notice at the very end of this clip here or where we're at right now, two things. Number one, our ridging is starting to amplify a bit in Texas. It's starting to poke northward. So our jet stream is getting a little more curvature to it. But number two, there's something happening on the left side of the screen here. We have a jet stream now, a polar jet, dropping into the western United States into early next week. This is a huge change to the pattern that we've been in. I want to back this up again and show you. Here's the pattern we've been in with this broad ridging across the west coast and our jet stream up in Canada. This does not help us at all. This jet stream is up in central Saskatchewan into Alberta. It's not helping us. The change here is that we get the jet stream to drop down into the United States into the west coast. It might seem insignificant initially because it's way over here, right? But all this momentum has to go somewhere, and we're going to watch that change. We're going to talk about why it's happening. So um, looking at the MJO, I know I've shown you guys this graphic a lot, but it's important because it helps us dictate how the atmospheric patterns are moving. So what we see on this image is our greens are our convection. This is the area that is most uh, susceptible to thunderstorm activity. And down here is your reference point on location, right? Your convection in the last couple of days has moved uh, into Eastern Asia and now is into the Western Pacific. Your dry air, your subsidence, this brown color, which is sinking air, subsidence is sinking air, dry air, no thunderstorms when the air is sinking, is starting to move in the next couple of days, it's forecast to move eastward across the, uh, into Eastern Asia and the Western Pacific. And your convection, your thunderstorms, are starting to shift into the central Pacific past the date line by the time we get past about the 15th to 18th of June. So what this tells us is our thunderstorm activity is moving across the Pacific for the first time in a while. It's been very stagnant here. Now we're starting to move. Uh, and if we back up and look at this pattern across the northern hemisphere and we look at what's happening in the Pacific, we're also getting a lot of movement. Do you see all this, this, big, this big jet extension all the way from Eastern Asia? through the central pacific north of hawaii here's hawaii and into the west coast and if we trace this forward and we continue rolling this forward what we see is a very long very extended jet stream on these models that is a long jet extension so what does this mean and why is it important well the reason is all of this momentum that builds up in the pacific it has to go somewhere right you can't just drop a trough here into the west and say okay that's it you're still getting pressure here from the northern pacific and then into the western united states so all this momentum has to go somewhere and so your trough develops but it's still getting pushed from the left side it's still getting pushed from this jet and so eventually what the models show happening we zoom back in here to north america is that jet collapses eastward into the plain states right and you're ridging across the plains the southern plains really starts to build but look where the ag belt is relative to this ridge your ridge is in mexico and southern texas and so your jet stream now that we have that jet back in the forecast that jet is coming right over the top here into the central plains. We have seen this before, folks. We've seen this pattern where the ag belt is right in that jet stream orientation. And what happens is your storm clusters develop here in the northern plains, and they eventually drop eastward into the Ohio Valley, into the Great Lakes, and into the ag belt. So this is a still, synoptically, a very good look for a pattern that will deliver precipitation to the ag belt at the end of June. You see the ridge, it's here down in Texas, it's here in the four corners, and your jet stream is right over the top of this. So think about this conceptually with me one more time. Your moisture coming from the subtropical jet comes around this ridge, it comes up into this region in the northern plains. Your jet stream comes in from the west, it touches off storms here, and those storms drop down into the ag region. So. The synoptic pattern looks about as good as it can get here for storm chances to increase. It's important to note, though, that not everyone is going to get those storms. Let's look at the model simulations and track these potential storm clusters. So here's our upper low spinning right now, right? Our next potential cluster comes into the forecast around this weekend. So we see a very broad signal here, but this is the model saying, hey, there's going to be storms forming here in the Dakotas. Nebraska and Kansas, and they're going to drop down into the Ohio Valley in the Midwest. So that's rain for Iowa. That's rain for Illinois. That's rain for parts of Indiana. How far north this cluster gets is still very uncertain. The models are currently suggesting it'll be a little too far south for the Great Lakes, and that's something to watch. So we'll keep an eye on this late weekend cluster, right? That's the first one. But let's go back to our jet stream 
late this week and early next week because if we pull this up, guess what? Our jet still hasn't even fully dropped in. It's next week, about a week from today and beyond where that jet collapses and now you have your westerly flow. So we look, go back to the precipitation and see, guess what? Here's your precipitation now showing up on the models. This is a, a storm cluster from the Dakotas through Minnesota and Iowa into Wisconsin, into Michigan, into the Ohio Valley. That's the model signifying that, hey, there's going to be a cluster here once that jet drops down and we get a more favorable looking pattern. This this agreement exists across models, GFS and Euro. And it looks like as we head into late June, these clusters will become more and more common. Here comes another one on the GFS after the 25th, and it's angled right down here through the ag belt. So this pattern is still changing. It's still evolving. And as we look at the jet stream, we want to watch the orientation of it to give us clues as to what's going to happen here. And our, although we get a storm cluster this weekend, it's when this jet collapses and we start to get this configuration that we get both the moisture and the precipitation and the lift from the jet. That's going to get our, our rain chances in our clusters into the northern plains, into the Great Lakes, and into the Ohio Valley. One quick thing to touch on, with this ridge coming for the Southern Plains interests, will also come the shutdown of precipitation eventually. We've had this subtropical jet flowing through Texas, flowing through Kansas, Oklahoma, New Mexico. Once this ridge builds, that jet is up here. It's up in the Dakotas and the Central Plains, which is great for the Northern Plains, bad for the Southern Plains. And if we look at the temperature forecast, that starts by this weekend. Record highs possible in Texas. By the time we get into this weekend and early next week, models suggesting highs in the lower to middle 100s, which would be records for areas like Dallas, Austin, and even further south in Texas. This is very significant warmth in those general regions. But again, it's this jet stream configuration and orientation that's going to lead to those uh, beneficial storm chances for the ag belt. And it's the reason why we're so confident in those precipitation chances coming back. Now, one more thing in this video that we that I want to add on. We've got a lot of questions of what could go wrong. You know, what 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 could unhinge this forecast? And the and the fact of the matter is in meteorology, no matter how confident you are in the forecast, there's always something that can go wrong and can unhinge and unwind your forecast ideas. And that's true here too. But I'm going to share this with you guys so we know what to look out for. What could go wrong so that when we start seeing that on ensembles, not operational runs, we start seeing it on the ensemble guidance we can maybe make an adjustment of our expectations. So here's what could go wrong, right? What do we have right now that's not working? We have this big trough over the Great Lakes in the Eastern US, and what that trough is doing is it's deflecting our jet stream up into Canada. This trough is not helping us. It's keeping us cooler, but it's taking our jet and our moisture and deflecting it away. I'm gonna use a model run as an example of what could go wrong with this pattern. If we continue to see these troughs drop into the eastern U.S., this jet stream orientation will likely be delayed. It won't be denied, but it will be delayed. Um, and here's a model run that shows a, a similar evolution to this. This is next week, and this upper low forms again in the eastern United States. You see this troughing that develops here. I'll pull up the height anomaly so we can see it. You see this trough. We get another east coast trough and another ridge in the central U.S. So instead of our jet coming down and bringing storm clusters into the ag belt, it goes up into Canada because there's a trough here. The jet tries to come in. You can see it entering here on the left side of your screen. It tries, but it says, wait a second, there's a traffic jam here. I got to go this way. And it goes up into Canada. And that leaves the ag belt void uh, of any significant precipitation, at least until the 20th. And then after that, the jet comes in and we'll probably be looking at storm clusters. But the question that we've gotten a lot is what can go wrong? This is what can go wrong. This is what we don't want to see in this pattern is we don't want to see this omega pattern with a trough in the west, a ridge in the central US and a trough in the east, because this is what has burned us for the last couple of months. And this is what could go wrong uh, to unwind this forecast. That being said, we are not expecting this to happen right now. We still are in a, in a very good, confident forecast regime here. And going back to the ensembles, the ensembles do not look like this. The ensembles take that jet from the western United States, and they bring it into the U.S., and they allow for that ridge to roll over. That allows for the moisture to come over the top and for the jet to bring those storm clusters into the ag belt. So stick with us here over the next couple of days. This pattern change is going to be gradual. It's not going to flip all at once. Not everyone's going to get rain at once, so we need to temper our expectations here, but it will 
gradually change and lead to those storm chances moving into the ag belt uh, as we head into late june and those areas that need rain will have opportunities to get rain but let's just keep our expectations in check and work through this uh, complicated forecast together here over the next couple days if you guys have any questions just give us a shout we're here 24 7 we'll be back with another video tomorrow have a great tuesday we'll talk to you soon take care